This is Father Jim Corda. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers Frank Baricella. God is here as we In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us pause and call to mind those times that through our own human weakness, we have failed to be true missionary disciples. Those moments when we have failed to bring the love and the mercy of God to others. For those moments, let us seek an outpouring of forgiveness and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. 
Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all throughout the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We might be very familiar with this story of the wheat and the weeds. And too often we might put our current understanding of that easy division onto these two groups, these two categories. And even toward the end, as Jesus tells the parable, we hear that the weeds will be collected, they'll be bound together, and they'll be thrown into the fire. But to be perfectly honest, it's not that simple. It's just not that easy. And that certainly is not what God ultimately intends. Now, we know that weeds do not turn into wheat, and wheat does not turn into weeds. But we all have at points in our lives, been both. There are times when we have tried very hard and have succeeded in being good, in doing God's will, in allowing that good seed planted within us to grow, to be nurtured, and to flourish, and produce that good fruit. But if we're honest with ourselves, there's also many times when we've been the weeds when we've opened ourselves up to allowing some other force, we call it the devil, but whatever it is, some other force 
creeping into our way of acting, our way of thinking, and sowing that bad seed and having it produce what bad seed does. The weeds that not only do no good on their own, but can choke off what is really good in this world. And yet the reality is, if we think of other stories in Scripture, does Jesus in his ministry only worry about those who are good? Do we not have story after story where Jesus reaches out and he is of ministry and of service, of care and compassion for those who, for whatever reason, have allowed the weeds to overtake the wheat in their lives? We hear the story of the lost sheep, he abandons the 99 and goes after the one. The woman caught in adultery, thrown before him, that he offers forgiveness to. Our responsorial psalm today reminded us that the Lord is good and forgiving. He forgives us those moments when we too often want to become the weeds and do not focus on the growth of the wheat. And yet, it's still not even that simple. Again, too often we want it simply to be good versus bad, black versus white. It's so simple, it's so easy. And that's not the way it is. The whole history of the church has been built in every age and every generation. Good people who at times have had differing views, different opinions. The creed that we are going to profess in just a few moments took four different councils over the span of decades and decades. And there was never a gathering of any council in the history of the church where they said, well, here's the good people and here's the bad people. They were people who came together all seeking the good of Jesus, but having different views, different opinions, different thoughts, different ways of going forward. And what ultimately had to happen in every one of those cases was for people to discern, discuss, and yes, let's be honest, at times argue. But once a decision was made, they came together. And in every one of those moments, the church then moved forward. Yes, along the way, there might have been those that said, I didn't get my way, I'm out of here. And they choose on their own to become the weeds. But there have been many who have said, I didn't think of it that way. I didn't look at it that way. You know, that has value. That has merit. And they invite the wheat to grow in their hearts and minds, in their deeds and actions. We live in a world that is too often very quick to see weeds in everybody else. If you don't think exactly like me, if you don't do exactly what I say and what I do, you're no good to me. We cannot continue to move forward in a world that focuses on that way of living. We need to allow God to decide. But until then, each and every one of us must allow that good seed to be sown in us and to allow that harvest to be bountiful. And for those moments when we've given in to the bad, we try through God's forgiveness and God's goodness to change our path and to move forward. It is, perhaps at the end, very easy. We just always need to open ourselves up to God's will and allow that to be who we are and who we ultimately become. Now together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty. Almighty. Maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For, For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he, he suffered, suffered death and was buried, and, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will, will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Placing our trust in God's mercy and forgiveness, let us now give voice to our prayers and needs this day. For the church, that just as the mature mustard tree is a dwelling place for the birds of the sky, we may be a dwelling place for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the nations of the world will promote the dignity of all persons, especially those whose voices are often not heard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For grandparents and the elderly, that they may be blessed with strength and good health as they pass on the treasure of their faith to future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges, prosecutors, attorneys, and all who work in the legal system, that they may judge with clemency and temper justice with mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving and merciful Father, accept the prayers that we have voiced and the many more that each of us carries in our hearts this day. For as always, we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, though the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, and with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory, glory are, are yours, yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer to each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you've imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory. 